If you're looking for a unique way to stay cool this summer, you can go underground. It seems aggressive, but it's not, it's not that much work. <laughs> you know, the tunnel your own. No, you don't. Way. The old Jordan Brewery ruins include a series of caves. Yeah, so these caves date back to the 1800s, and they have been explored. They have not been for about half a century now, but they are open to the public once again. And reporter Kristen Hobrick took a little jaunt to Jordan and takes a look. I'm so excited to be here today and to explore the old historic Jordan Brewery Caves. But before we do, I'd love to learn more about your current business, Strains of the Earth. Thank you for being here. We do appreciate you being here. I started back in 2019. Really wanted to help people in a holistic manner. And we started out in a very small section offering just CBD. And then we kind of uh, started progressing and taking over the rest of the building, kind of expanding into, of course, this dispensary that we're standing in. Yeah, uh, yeah we also offer a plant in a mushroom retail store as well. Mm -hmm. And on our third floor, we completely kind of renovated that, uh, getting it back to its kind of original state and uh, building a sanctuary for a lot of mind and body classes and even educational classes, things like that. Yeah. We are going to head back in time into some caves that really haven't been opened up in half a century. So going back to 1863, uh, middle of the Civil War, this was the old Jordan Brewery and they were keeping and storing beer inside, is that right? Absolutely, yeah, they uh, started building the building. They actually used a lot of the stone that you see in our building, was pulled from these caves themselves. They hand carved, you can see the tool marks and everything. Yeah, and this proved back. to be the perfect spot to have that beer stay cool. What's the yes. temperature typically like? So the temperature, consistently stays about 56 to 57 degrees year round um, in the summertime when it's hot we keep the door open and we actually cool our building with it <laughs> yeah no need for ac you just open the cave doors you had to know about the history here in the caves was that a big draw in wanting to purchase this property you had an idea of of kind of its potential and, and kind of uh you know aesthetics and what it had to offer mm -hmm. um, we only only a small fraction kind of knew about the caves, but weren't able to ever really go into it. Just wasn't finished. It sure. wasn't quite kind of safety yeah. ready. But uh, but yeah, so we felt had, like the potential could could be there. Absolutely, yeah. Right? We we really saw the potential in the entire building. Yeah. People used to have to put on you know rubber boots and. Sure. Get a little mucky, get a little wet when coming back here, but now yeah. we've installed all this beautiful cedar. We've got over 300 feet of cedar in here. We've got, you know, a couple different little chambers yeah. and things that we I have. I love hearing the water drip in, and as I look up to the ceiling, I can see the stalactites forming. Yeah, 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 I know. There's a lot of, you know, limestone and, you know, different, you know, salt sure. deposits and things. Take me back to that time. So you're getting yeah. into the building, and you open that door for the first time and look into the cave. It, I mean, it, it was not in good shape. Uh, it wasn't. It was, uh, when you open that door, you know, there's a kind of steel walkway to get into the, the caves, mm -hmm. but it was water. There's constantly water going almost all the way up to the door. Wow. It had to be an pumped. Active cave, so Active caves, flowing. you have springs uh, back there. We had to pump the caves at least every week to make sure it's, the water didn't overflow it's into the building It's a big undertaking. Itself. Yeah. Huge undertaking. So as we round this corner, I'm noticing a big stop mark. Back when Prohibition began, the Jordan Brewery actually was still producing alcohol, beer, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they actually used to use these caves um, as a way to, you know, rum run, to, you know, illegally still distribute all do that alcohol. Do some bootlegging. Do some bootlegging, yeah. exactly. There's actually this big wall over here. The city of Jordan actually came in and had them wall it right off. These tunnels used to go all over the city of Jordan. It used to go, you know, all the way down the hill so people would, you know, wow. here at the brewery, fill up their barrels, send and them just... down the creek, and then someone would pick it up at the other end of the hill and, you know, wow. take it off to, you know, wherever they were uh, continuing their operations. And the city said, operations. prohibition, we have got to put a stop to that. Yes. I wanted to restore the building to get it back to its historical kind of stage, yeah. right? I think there's so much history here that it was that there's no way we wanted this to close down or to, to fail or to no one to ever go through the building again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really important to us to not only build this natural holistic wellness center, but again, to open the building back up to the yeah. public. And, and keep the integrity yeah, of the structure exactly. and the history and all of that. When the prohibition hit, was that the end of the Jordan Brewery? So originally it was the Jordan Brewery, then it got uh, taken over by Schultz and Hilgers. Um, Schultz and Hilgers is the one who actually shut down during prohibition time. They came back after prohibition. 
um, continued to produce, and then eventually Mankato Brewing Company actually came in, took over for a short period of time. It's been a lot of different things over the years. You could buy livestock here. It used to house ambulances, the newspaper, the Jordan Independent used to be housed here. So the building's been plenty of things uh, right up until, you know, we turned into our retail sales. I, the, I, I've driven by that. I had no yeah. idea. It's really Jordan neat. is so cool. It's such a pretty little town. So uh, thank you, Kristen. And another reminder, those cave tours are free. And if you go, Kristen says right next door is a great spot for lunch. It's called Dahlia's All-in-One Mexican Restaurant. It's family-owned, authentic Mexican food. You can learn more about the cave tours and the Mexican restaurant on our website at Minnesota Live.